with Indian origin by the name of Andreas Moritz. He passed away a few years ago. So if cancer is not a disease, you look at it differently. What causes cancer? Several factors cause cancer at different levels. First of all, physical. Physical things can cause cancer. What you eat, what you drink, what you breathe, what you intake physically can cause cancer. Second, and the most powerful, are the emotions. Negative emotions are dangerous. Fear, hatred, animosity, jealousy, all these are dangerous. Anger, frustration, they are dangerous. They cause cancer. Because when you have these feelings, you release a chemical in your body called cortisol that can truly ruin your systems. Third thing that causes cancer are your thoughts. You are what you think most of the time. And thoughts are powerful. You can heal yourself or can even attract disease to yourself based on what you think and how you think. So at three levels, at three levels, anywhere cancer can come to you. To heal cancer, you need to reverse what causes cancer. Top of the list is the spiritual power. If you have the spiritual power, you can truly negate and take away the disease from your body. And as believers, we are told in the Holy Quran, وَإِنْ يَمْسَسْكَ اللَّهُ بِضُرٍ فَلَا كَاشِفَ لَهُ إِلَّا هُمْ when harm is afflicted upon you, no one can take it away except Allah. وَإِنْ يَمْسَسْكَ بِخَيْرٍ فَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ And when you receive somehow and it touches you, the goodness touches you, then Allah is the one who is capable of everything. With that belief, one thing I learned and that was the biggest gift, as I said earlier, in re-evaluating my life, I came to realize that my faith was not that, that strong. It gave me an opportunity to strengthen my relationship with my Lord, with Allah. For I realized majority of, ble of uh, blessings that he has given me, the many provisions he has given me, I took them for granted. I never appreciated what he has given me or never appreciated enough of what he has given me. So lying in bed for several months, unable to function, I had plenty of time to reevaluate my life. Spending the nights unable to sleep, even taking sleeping pills, they did the job in the early days, but later on, they had no effect. Gave me an opportunity also to reevaluate my life. And I must admit, for the first part of it, I said I'm not ready. I am not ready for this. I have so much to accomplish. This has come, has come at the wrong time. I have many things that I want to accomplish before calling it a day. I have a mother to look after, I have kids to look after, I want them to see, to, to see them through their education, I want to see them through their marriage. I basically, I want to support the community, and I'm still in my early 50s, and I'm not ready. The more I was in denial, the more it bothered me. And I came to realize this was a signal from Allah to say, Mr. Khalfan, stop, reevaluate take stock and decide what you want to do with your life. So although it is easier to say that faith and your relationship with Allah will heal you, but I question myself 
and I ask you also to go and revisit your faith, your beliefs. Are you truly a believer? Do you believe in what you read and what you recite? Or are you just one of those who go through the, the rituals and most of the time they are empty rituals? With spiritual treatment and healing, it comes in two parts. The biggest part of it is all about thanking Allah. It is showing gratitude for what you have, not asking for what you don't have. Then I got into a habit, and I encourage you to do the same habit. The habit was this. I hope I can find it is to sit in one session quietly, no distractions, no telephones, no friends, no TV, nobody except you and yourself and your Lord. Take the beads, these are 99, and begin to count the blessings that you have. And each one of them spend three minutes contemplating on that blessing that you have. The way to contemplate is to say, for example, I'm thankful to my Lord because I'm alive. Now that I'm alive, what does being alive mean? If tomorrow I was to be taken away, if Allah was to snatch away the gift of life from me, am I ready? Is my family ready? As you contemplate on that, you say, yes, I truly want to cling on life because, not to life, but I want to cling to my Lord because this is the gift that I want to maintain for a while. And then you say, I thank my Lord for the gift of the faculty of seeing. I can see. Contemplate on tomorrow waking up and blind, being blind. Are you ready? Are you using the faculty of seeing in the way it's supposed to be, or are you using it wrongly? To strengthen faith is basically to continue with gratitude. Before you ask, thank for what you have. Almighty Allah says in the Quran, Your Lord has decreed, if you are thankful, he shall give you more. And there are many reasons we have to be thankful for what we have. And any time Allah takes something away from you, there is a good reason why he does that. Nevertheless, what he keeps behind is so much that you ought not to think of what you don't have. I no longer think myself as a survivor of cancer. My mind is still active, my emotions are positive, the body is lagging behind, but with time, inshallah, it will catch up. So it ought not to be an excuse from contributing. It ought not to be an excuse from participating in society. It ought not to be seen as a stigma that one fears meeting people to say, because I have this, therefore I have to keep away from the society and wait to die. When the time comes, it will come, whether you are alive, whether you are healthy or unhealthy, whether you are fit or unfit. That's none of your business when the time comes. When it comes, let it come. Just be ready for it. And then the second thing is that one ought to realize the body is just a vehicle. The body is just a housing for the soul, for the spirit. And the body goes wrong, it does not mean the soul is weak or the soul is homeless. And indeed, the soul can live in a body that is incomplete. There are people who are blind, there are people who are disabled, there are people who are diabetic, there are people who have uh, one lung, one kidney, and they are functioning. So whatever disease you have or anything that is wrong in the body, it ought not to be a disability taken per se. Per se. As long as the mind is active, just continue. As long as you have your soul and you keep on nourishing your soul, then you are okay, you are fine. Be positive about it. And that is the spiritual learning that I have learned. The third spiritual learning that I have learned is to have a conversation with my Lord. 
rather than just have it superficially uttering a few words and a few prayers present and unpresent now I'm learning to compose before I do the prayer I learn to prepare myself for the meeting for the encounter and that was another blessing because now I have plenty of time to myself and my priorities have changed therefore I can do a better job and as Muslims I think we have failed to appreciate the 20 minutes we have between the call to prayer and the time to pray the 20 minutes warning were meant as an opportunity to begin to slowly close the files that are occupying our mind and gradually begin to prepare their heart for the encounter but most of the time we just go for the last minute but if you capitalize on the 20 minutes to compose to find the tranquility to search for the inner peace will come to realize it's the best gift you can have to live in this life the second powerful treatment is the mental treatment what you say to yourself what you visualize today we know and the doctors tell us that in the medical world sometimes they don't give you the treatment you want they give you only sugar and they tell you this is the medicine it will treat you but in reality it's not they play with your mind and you believe it do you have any doctors here any professional doctors if they are, I think they're hiding they want they, they don't want to we are with you we're not against you yeah so the mind what you say to yourself and you keep on repeating to yourself and you repeat to yourself eventually it becomes true to yourself and just keep on repeating to yourself I'm okay I am fine I am fine my body is healthy my body is clean keep on repeating that and eventually you'll be surprised what goes out and what stays so the mental exercise is very important then the emotional part and that is the most dangerous that we as a society I think we have yet to master the emotional intelligence I think what I got in my emotions had part to play with of why I got cancer stress frustration anger fear they all play a game they all play parts in what people have and the more you have them with you the more dangerous they become the more you dwell upon them and I want you to remember this statement it's one statement that I learned in the process thoughts that are emotionalized become magnetized and attract similar thoughts it becomes a vicious circle the minute you begin to entertain a thought and you attach with it an emotion as an example a spouse a friend a colleague says a word to you that is nasty you begin to react why did he say that word to me and then emotionally you begin to react what right does he have or does she have to tell me that word don't they know that word is hurting me I'm upset now I'm angry I don't like it I'm frustrated I'm irritated the more you get into it you move from a mere irritation gradually you grow into a frustration then it becomes anger eventually turns into rage once you get into rage you have upset your system your chemicals are in a mess and basically you can do anything you can no longer think rationally and I think as a society a lot of people are inflicted with cancer because of emotions we tamper with relationship as if it's nothing we hurt the loved ones as if it's okay 
We use plenty of bl emotional blackmail simply to manipulate people to do what we want them to do. It starts with the family at home with kids, with spouse, with relatives, with friends, with colleagues, basically with everybody. Someone, for example, you go and visit someone after one month of absenteeism. The first thing is that they attack you. Where have you been one month? You didn't ask. You don't care. And they begin to bombard you simply to make you feel guilty. So playing the victimized role as a society is something we love, unfortunately. And that is very dangerous. To me, I can say, because I didn't want to upset anybody, I was playing the role of the rescuer, trying to rescue everybody, being there for the community, being there for the society, being there for anybody who needed me. And associating myself with a lot of negatives with all these people I was counseling, without me realizing I was absorbing their negativity. I was taking it with me. I was taking their baggages with me. I allowed myself to be sucked in into the emotions without me knowing. And I think that was when the wake-up call came because I was messing my system without me knowing. Working hard, working long hours, skipping meals, eating junk food as a result. And because I was there for the society, and the society, the wrong type of society, those who are always in trouble, eventually I think it got over me. I was overwhelmed with the issues. So emotions is something I would say, if you are here, and you are Omani or you are an Arab, this society, I would say because of your emotions, you stand a big chance of being the next person to be diagnosed with cancer. So watch out. The Quran, the teachings of Allah and the Prophet of Islam is all about cleansing the heart. Inna Allah yuhibbu tawabin. Allah loves those who repent. Repentance is none other than cleansing your heart. Wa yuhibbu mutatahirin. And He loves those who cleanse their bodies. Be pure. Those who believe and they find tranquility in remembering Allah. Truly, truly in remembering Allah, one finds tranquility within, in the heart. Those who control their anger. And those who forgive and forget. Wallahu yuhibbul muhsineen and Allah loves those who go beyond the call of duty and they give kindness in return. The Prophet of Islam said, "Ifu amman zalamak, forgive and forget those who have wronged you. Wasil man qata'ak, and the ones who broke the relationship, you make the link back, you visit them, you make the contact. Wa ahsin ila man asalik, and do kindness to those who have done wrong to you." This is the teaching. The reality is the opposite. If you do not retaliate, you're not a person. You're not demonstrating your personality. So ego is your biggest enemy, my friends. Ego. Emotions. I'm always right. No one can hurt me. And anyone who tries to hurt me, I'm going to show them the stars during the day. Yeah? Yeah? And we love to play with that game. And then, it's about the physical treatment, the lifestyle, what you eat, what you drink. All medicine, without an exception, are chemicals. Your body was not created to handle chemicals, even Panadols. Anytime you take these chemicals, you're introducing a foreign entity into your body, and your body has to learn to cope with it. First time, it will handle it. Second time it will handle it. Tenth time it will handle it. Twentieth time, the body begins to give up. And when your immune system gives up, you are finished. And that is my issue with the mainstream medicine. Because it is endless. They cannot treat it, they can only control it. Things you have to avoid physically. Number one, Top of the list are the three white poisons. 
the three white poisons refined sugar refined flour and refined salt take them out of your menu refined sugar is sugar that has been bleached refined flour flour that has been bleached to look good refined salt has been bleached take them out of your menu replace them with natural sugar replace them with brown flour or whole wheat and replace salt with sea salt or mountain salt clean salt natural salt so number one keep away from medicine it's business they want you to have more of it the more of it you have the more damage you do and the more you're gonna need go for natural stuff two the white the three white poisons the meat we eat today is not organic meat the fruits we eat today are not organic fruits the veg we have today are not organic veg they are all chemically made or chemically raised so try to go organic from chicken to meat to fish even fish today we have uh, unfortunately organic no no longer organic fish very few veg i had an apple and it stayed with me for one month it didn't change it didn't change color it didn't change its status it remained that it is fresh and crispy then i wonder is this a true apple or is it just chemicals yeah spend more money to go organic rather than spend all your wealth in, in, seek, in seeking medicine today at home we've made a small farm and we're eating organic we're trying to eat organic as much as we can we're not there yet but the journey has started and then to the youth to the young i tell you the junk food that you eat from these fast foods they are killers any meat that is burnt is automatically cancerous barbecue and that was another contributor i was a lover of barbecue every other day i had to have barbecue never realized that when meat is burnt the charcoal that you eat is cancerous i got to know that later when it was too late all the fast food is a junk food don't go for it you're asking for trouble if you truly care about your body and you realize repairing it is difficult start today you don't wait till you hit with a calamity and i believe allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us enough abundance to go healthy and it is all based on supply and demand in oman today in the masbat area here I only know of one, one shop that is selling organic stuff. I don't know any other. We have to go in demand to have more organic. The more we go for organic, the more it will be there for us. So we do contribute. If we can all begin to boycott all these junk food, processed food, plastic, whatever it is, I think we deserve a better life. And finally, even the water we drink apparently is unhealthy. It's dead water. And there was a study that was made. The water we drink today is dead water. Even the water that has been the mineral water. For you to give that water life again, it has to go back to earth. So you take it straight from earth and drink it is the best way. The natural filter. But you don't have to go and throw it back on earth and then try to bring it up. We need to go back to our ancestors. We used to have these pots, clay pots, jahla. Do you know the jahla? I recommend every house to have one. Once you put water in that clay pot, within 30 minutes, it, it regains its natural vibrancy of water. Then you can drink it. So to summarize, and we're going to stop for prayer. To summarize, I say this. Cancer is not a disease. It is the body's reaction to how we have been mishandled the body. To how we've been mishandling the body. It is the body's natural reaction to survive. It is giving you signals that I want you to survive. I want to survive. I want to look after the body. Do something. And the only way to get rid of it is to know the cause and reverse. See what you eat, 
how you feel, what you think, and how you connect spiritually. Find the fault, find the mistake, find the cause, fix it, go back to the nature, and you will be okay. As of me, I'm still pursuing treatment. I'm a believer now more, I'm a more of a believer now in what the Quran says than I was before. Before I used to talk about it, but I was taken by civilization as it is today, the modernization, and paid little attention to it. Number one, in my daily, my daily ritual, my daily routine, natural honey, natural honey, not the honey that has been made in the farms, the mountain honey, expensive as it is, it's worth it, because Allah says it in the Quran. يخرج من بطونها شراب مختلف ألوانه فيه شفاء للناس إن في ذلك لآية لقوم يتفكرون. From the tummies of these honeybees come a drink. In different colors in it there is a cure for mankind the black seed I believe in it daily you have garlic you have ginger turmeric these are the best antibiotics not the antibiotics that you get that make you dizzy natural antibiotics go fresh go green go natural and you'll be okay أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم فاستغفروه يغفر لكم إنه هو الغفور الرحيم وادعوه يستجب لكم إنه هو البر الكريم. We'll stop إن شاء الله for the prayers. When the prayers are over, we'll have a session on question and answers إن شاء الله. For those who are interested in uh, the talk, it's been recorded and it will be available on website www.islamfact.com. Islam Fact. F-A-C-T dot com or on Twitter I-I-C Oman I-I-C Oman double I-C Oman or if you follow me on Twitter when I get the link we'll also pass it to you inshallah Assalamu alaikum Allah wassalam Shukran al-Hadr Thank you very much Yes, I'll, I'll make open question Allah afiq wa shriq inshallah regarding uh, Negative thought. You know, some psychologists they say naturally everyone has come to him more than 60 negative ideas. How can we get rid of it? Thank you. Good question. Psychologists tell us every day you receive 60,000 messages from self, from others. Messages come to you. Of those messages, 90% of them are negative. That is a fact of life. That's why our body has got an immune system. That's why we have the faculty of reasoning. That's why Almighty Allah gave us the most powerful shield. Anytime you get a negative thought, the first thing you have to say is, A'udhu Billah. I seek refuge with Allah from the negative thoughts. When people who are kind enough to come and shake my hand here, some of them asked me some questions and some of them shared their stories. One of them is that he said, I've got a sister who is an elderly. How can we protect her from the negative thoughts, specifically when we have visitors? Some visitors, well, specifically women, when they visit, they tend to give you stories of people who had a similar disease and uh, it got worse. They say, I know this person who had the disease and she died. And I know this person who had this disease and they had to go and remove this much and have... You get plenty of that. And my suggestion, to protect yourself from negative thoughts, do three things. One of them is, A'udhu Billah Min Shaitan Rajim. Seek refuge with Allah from the devil, the devilish thoughts. Two, invoke the name of Allah. Azkurullah Hadikran Kathira. Invoke the name of your Lord a lot. Because in it you get tranquility, as I mentioned earlier. Ala bidhikrillahi tatma'inul qulub. Truly, in remembering Allah, one finds tranquility within their hearts. Three, be thankful for what you have. 
It's where you choose to focus. Psychologists are good at that. When you go with something, they make you switch your focus. The minute you change your focus, everything changes. So instead of calling it a disease, call it a gift. The focus has changed. 